The movie begins with two Royal Air Force pilots flying over an Afghan region to scout for insurgents when they get attacked by missiles. Despite trying their best to dodge the missiles, they still get hit and are forced to eject from their fighter planes. After the successful attack, the insurgents quickly follow the British pilots to where they will land so that they can finish them off. Afterward, one of the pilots, Johnson, checks if his fellow pilot, Kate, is still alive. Upon seeing that she is alright, Johnson signals her to stay quiet because he knows that the insurgents are nearby. He then cocks his pistol and proceeds to fire at an enemy, but the enemy counters by firing from his much more powerful rifle. After Johnson goes down, Kate pretends to be dead so that the enemy will come close to her. When the enemy is within her range, Kate quickly kills him and subsequently fires at the other nearby enemies until there is only one left. Upon firing at the last one, Kate realizes that her pistol has run out of ammo. She then tries to crawl to the nearest rifle, but before she can reach it, Johnson fires at the last insurgent. After that, Johnson dies of his wounds. With no time to grieve, Kate immediately gathers the things that she needs to survive before moving. She then quickly contacts her allies for reinforcements, but she receives no reply. Eventually, she arrives at a location that used to be an underground Soviet Union bunker. Kate just heads straight to the metal door of the bunker without thinking about it twice. When she is right at the door, enemy reinforcements arrive at the scene and immediately fire at her. She quickly hides and fires back at them, taking down at least two insurgents. At this point, one of the insurgents decides to fire a rocket launcher toward her. Fortunately, Kate dodges the missile and it hits the metal door instead. With the metal door now open, Kate sees this as an opportunity to get away from her enemies. As such, she swiftly runs inside the bunker, but she drops her gun right at the door because it cannot fit. Because the door is open, Kate runs further inside the slightly dim bunker. She then stumbles upon a very deep hole with a ladder as its only access. Though not wanting to descend into the unknown darkness, she proceeds to go down anyway so that she can survive. After getting down, Kate continues her journey into the unknown with her green-colored glow stick as her only source of light. Slowly but surely, she makes her way through the dark cavern-like passageways of the old bunker. While this is happening, the enemies are also entering the bunker to follow her. Later on, Kate stumbles upon a mummified corpse with scattered scientific notes beside it. She takes the small camera on the table before resuming her walk in the dark. However, enemies suddenly come near her, prompting her to throw away the glow stick and run into the darkness. As the insurgents search for her, the faint light suddenly open throughout the bunker, they then see the silhouette of various monstrous beings inside containers. While the enemies are slightly distracted, Kate attacks one of them and manages to steal his gun before running away. They then trade bullets against each other. In the ensuing gunfight, one of the containers containing the strange creature shatters, letting out the unknown being within. Outnumbered, Kate then sees a vent on the ground beside the strange creature. Without hesitation, she dives into the vent and makes her escape. Because they see her go through the vent, the insurgents attempt to search for her by lighting the narrow passageway where she is crawling, but Kate successfully evades them. At this time, one of the insurgents left behind attempts to hide the strange creature with a plastic cover, whether by respect or by plain disgust. However, the creature comes to life and immediately attacks the man. Later on, another insurgent spots his comrade being consumed by the monster, causing him to close the door immediately. Meanwhile, Kate has just left the vent. She then resumes her escape by climbing the nearest stairs, but she is stopped by one of the insurgents. But due to her quick thinking, she manages to subdue the enemy by using one of her flare sticks against the enemy. As if armed with a laser pointer, the flare accurately hits the insurgent's chest. Kate then proceeds to climb back to the ladder that leads to the front door of the bunker. Just as she is going to walk away, an enemy that has managed to survive their fight earlier takes hold of her foot. Suddenly, a monstrous hand rips the insurgent's face. Kate immediately runs away to the bunker's door when she is almost pulled back by the monster. Luckily, she survives the encounter and quickly locks the gate. 
It is now night outside, and an enemy named Kabir immediately points a gun toward the exhausted Kate. But instead of killing or taking her as a prisoner, Kabir hurriedly flees from the place upon noticing the monster at the bunker's door. For this reason, Kate is left alone to fend for herself in the Afghan wilderness. After a while of walking, she gets accidentally hit by a Humvee with four American soldiers inside. After they confirm that Kate is on their side, the soldiers assist Kate to their Humvee and drive her back to the base. But before that, one of the soldiers named Lafayette steals Kate's locket. The following day, Kate talks to the one-eyed Finch, the commanding officer in charge of the camp. She tells him that there is something in the bunker that they have to kill immediately and destroy. Finch, however, doesn't want to risk the lives of his men, and he thinks that Kate is just hallucinating. He then takes the camera that she found in the bunker. This infuriates her because she knows what she has seen is real. A soldier, Hook, enters the tent to inform Finch that they have found an insurgent to interrogate who is Kabir that fled earlier from the bunker. At this point, Kate leaves the tent. She then encounters Lafayette again and demands for her stolen locket. When Lafayette refuses to return it, Hook appears and reprimands his fellow soldier for stealing the jewelry. Because of this, Lafayette returns the locket and Hook convinces Kate to go to the doctor. He then informs her that this camp is where all the lousy soldiers get assigned. For instance, Finch is supposed to be a colonel that got demoted to major after a devastating blunder and Lafayette has a bad habit of stealing things. Afterward, Kate is treated by a doctor who recognizes that her wound is not caused by a bullet, but does not ask her where she got it. After the treatment, she goes to see Kabir, who still looks shocked by what he has seen. She tries to talk to him, but she is told that Kabir does not seem to speak and understand English. Hook then enters the tent and talks to Kate, as well as a British soldier named Jones. Here, Hook inquires about the bunker because it does not seem to exist on maps of the region. Kate tries to describe what she has seen, including the writings on the bunker's door. Because she has a photographic memory, she is able to rewrite the Russian writing that she saw. The soldiers do not know Russian, but Kabir tells them that it means do not open in Russian, which means that he actually speaks English. The soldiers then become confused because if the bunker is from the Soviet era, then that means no one should be able to live that long inside. That night, other monsters are also escaping their containers. Because they are now numerous, the monsters are able to open the bunker's door. The monsters then waste no time to go to the base and immediately kill one of the soldiers during a change of shift. Soon after, another soldier spots the monsters running through the night. He then shouts that they have encountered enemies, waking the whole camp up. As such, each of them immediately goes to their post to defend the base. Meanwhile, Hook reports to Finch that their enemies are not insurgents but some monsters. For this reason, Finch allows the use of any weapons necessary to eliminate them. However, the monsters are just too strong and quick for them to fight against. They eventually infiltrate the base, killing the soldiers one by one. One of the monsters barges inside the doctor's tent, where Kate and Kabir reside. A monster quickly subdues Kate with its tongue. Before the creature can do anything to her, Kabir saves Kate by slicing the monster up until it dies in a gruesome fashion. With their numbers dwindling, the soldiers have no choice but to regroup in the middle of the camp. Hook, along with the doctor, goes back out to rescue Finch at his office. They arrive just in time to save their commanding officer from imminent death, and Finch proceeds to beat the monster with a baseball bat. Finch then orders them to leave him there because he will just be detrimental to them due to his injury, but Hook insists that they should go together. Meanwhile, Kate and another soldier go to the armory to gather more weapons, but it is locked. After unlocking the door, they disappointingly find out that there are no weapons there. A while later, Hook, Finch, and the doctor come into view. Suddenly, a monster ambushes them and the soldiers immediately fire at the lone creature. While they are busy firing at it, Kate gets an axe from the armory and jumps at the monster to hack it, with Hook finishing it off with gunfire. However, this is just one monster. The rest of the monsters soon arrive, forcing the remaining soldiers to lock themselves inside the armory. Since Finch is unconscious from his wound, Hook orders the remaining soldiers to wait until tomorrow to see if anything will change. While they wait for daylight, Hook asks Kabir about what he knows. He responds that the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan drastically changed the region where he lives. 
According to him, men and women from his village started disappearing during the war, including his father. These disappearances then suddenly stopped when the Soviets finally withdrew from the conflict. The following day, the soldiers check the base and find that the monsters are gone as well as the bodies of their fallen allies. Hook then checks on Kate if she's okay and she responds that she doubts whether they can make it home. Afterward, the soldiers obtain the dead body of a monster and the smell emanating from its body immediately disgusts them. Because the doctor is the most professional regarding bodies, he then checks the anatomy of the monster. Upon checking, he finds out that the body of the monster is thick like armor, but it is weak against sunlight. He then pries open the monster using a power tool and shockingly discovers that there are human organs within. It is here that Finch talks for the first time since last night. He immediately apologizes to Kate because he knows about the monsters all along. According to Finch, the army intelligence had already had their eyes on the region for many decades. It is only due to the camera that Kate found that they are able to confirm it is real. In fact, the reason why the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan is because they have seen an alien object crash into the region. They then managed to successfully combine the aliens with human subjects, but the results turned out monstrous instead. As such, the soldiers now are placed in a precarious position because they cannot escape due to both insurgents and monsters. While Finch is giving a rousing speech about defending the camp, the dead monster on the table suddenly becomes alive and immediately attacks Kate. When it chokes Kate with its tentacles, the soldiers try their best to assault the overpowering monster. Kate eventually escapes its clutches. At this time, Finch heroically saves the rest of his platoon by running toward the monster with a live grenade in his hand, dying almost immediately. Now, there are only seven of them left to fend for themselves, and Hook finally releases Kabir, whose hands have been tied all this time. Afterward, they place Finch's corpse in a body bag. With the communication radio busted and with limited ammunition left, the soldiers decide to go on a mission to destroy the monster's nest, which is the Soviet bunker. While they are preparing, Hook tells Kabir that he is free to leave the place but he decides to come with them because he wants to avenge the people of his village who got experimented upon. After preparing for the upcoming battle, the squad finally moves out. The plan is simply to throw a load of C4 on top of the deep hole inside the Soviet bunker. This will then blow the place up, thus trapping the monsters inside. The plan goes smoothly until Hook gets dragged down by a monster to the deep hole, but Hook suddenly communicates with Kate via their radio. He tells her to complete the mission without him because accidents like this happen on the battlefield. He then gets knocked out by the monster. However, Kate is resolute in her decision to save her comrade. Although it is a foolish choice, she manages to inspire the other soldiers to rescue Hook. As such, they devise a new plan wherein the soldiers will go down on a platform that is tied to the Humvee. After they rescue Hook, the doctor who is manning the Humvee will then pull them all back up once he hears the signal. While the squad executes this plan, the doctor receives an order from the army intelligence that all units in the area have to evacuate quickly because they are going to blow the place up. This means that the squad has only 20 minutes to save Hook from imminent danger. Meanwhile, Hook wakes up in a room and sees a monster feasting upon some flesh. The monster senses his movements and immediately subdues him with its tentacles. Hook then bites the tentacles that are wrapped around his neck, forcing the monster to let him go. He then stabs a knife into the monster's chin and proceeds to stab it several times to kill it. Back to the squad, they find out in the bunker's laboratory that the monsters have drained the blood from fallen soldiers' bodies by using tubes. After tracing the tubes to a single location, the squad makes a shocking discovery that the monsters are revitalizing a much bigger monster. Finally, they reunite with Hook, who runs towards them with a monster chasing him. After the squad quickly defeats the monster, they then receive the signal, indicating that they now have to go back. However, at this exact moment, other monsters start to appear. It turns out that the monsters have smartly prepared an ambush for the group because they know that Hook will be rescued. For this reason, the squad quickly closes the door at the laboratory. Jones sacrifices himself when preventing the monsters from opening the door. They then run back to the platform, but Lafayette is left behind without the rest of them knowing. As such, it is only when they get to the platform that they have realized that they have one member missing. Hook then goes back for her. 
Outside the bunker, the doctor has a problem of his own because insurgents are attacking the bunker. As such, he quickly hops to the machine gun on top of the Humvee and fires at them. During his shooting spree against the insurgents, the machine gun unfortunately jams, opening an opportunity for one of the enemies to attack him at close range. Meanwhile, Lafayette bravely fights against one of the monsters, even defeating it with all her might. However, her luck gets cut short when another monster arrives and eats her face. When Hook comes back for her, it is already too late because Lafayette is already dead. He then fights against the monster, but this is abruptly interrupted when the planted C4 has finally detonated. Fortunately, Hook manages to get inside a small room, sparing him from the explosion. Outside, the doctor has finally defeated one of the enemies that attacked him. He then presses the button that will enable the platform to rise up. However, instead of the platform rising up, the Humvee is being slowly pulled inside the bunker ahead. The doctor tries to stop the slow movement of the Humvee, but the vehicle is too heavy for him to push back. Worse, he is also doing this while trying to dodge enemy bullets from hitting him. Eventually, the doctor has no choice but to abandon the Humvee. For this reason, it falls down toward the squad that are now surrounded by the monsters. But before the vehicle can hit the platform, Kate manages to escape. As such, she is the sole survivor from the platform. She then encounters Hook, who is alive and well. They then hold onto a rope and quickly ascend back to the bunker's entrance. Outside, the doctor gets caught by the insurgents who tie him up and beat him senseless. They then attempt to cut his head while filming it with their phone. They are immediately killed by Kate and Hook. With only a few seconds left before the army drops the bomb around the area, the three remaining survivors quickly drive away and manage to get away just in time. Meanwhile, a helicopter has dropped on the soldiers' now abandoned camp. Two special soldiers wearing all-black attire are looking for the valuable camera that is supposed to be in Finch's possession, but they cannot find it. It turns out that Kate has it, and it was given to her by Lafayette before her death. The movie ends with the three survivors going back to the car to finally drive away from the place, but at this time, the car has run out of fuel. It is a low-budget movie, which is noticeable from the effects and props. However, while it is lacking in budget, the movie somehow makes up for it through the cinematography in some areas, and how the story itself manages to interestingly weave historical facts with fiction, thereby creating an idea that can compel one to think. But sadly, this idea is not expanded more, instead focusing on the rather cheesy dialogues and overacting of some characters. Overall, although the movie has an interesting premise for me, it offers nothing more that will make me watch it again.